This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. We have another super chat here from Liam. Liam says, so as a trans man in Wisconsin, should I consider relocating somewhere very, very, very far away now? Well, you, you, Liam, uh, are in a, a situation in Wisconsin where things could be taken a bad turn. Uh, we can, we can talk about some of those races here. Um, we've got, We've got Ron Johnson, who is, again, a sycophantic bootlicking scum uh, for Donald Trump, and Mandela Barnes, a, a quality, solid candidate who loves uh, loves America and Americans. And uh, in on the on the on the governor's side, you've got another very tight race. So, look, I'm not going to give anybody any advice about where they could move, where they should move and where they'll be safest. I don't know. But. Um, it is absolutely a scary, and again, I'll use the word tenuous time, if you are in a marginalized group by no choice of your own, um, when we are facing the hatred and violence and vitriol that we are on a daily basis, especially when you're in the trans community. The, 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 the trans issue, and it's something that I, I talk about frequently, is the civil rights issue of our time. You don't want to be on the wrong side of history. If you don't understand it, that's fine. Do some research, read a book, talk to someone, have a conversation. But if we don't stand with our trans brothers and sisters of the, of the people who are being impacted by Republican policies, we're on the wrong side of history. And in 20 or 30 years, you will be embarrassed. You will not be able to talk to your children about the stance that you took because you will know that you were wrong and you will be ashamed. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, take care of yourself, Liam. Um, That's most important. I mean, your safety, what you feel is best for you. If if you do want to relocate and you can. If you're in a position to do so. And you would feel safer then no. absolutely. I mean, the, the timing of this question is well-timed because the polls in Wisconsin are getting ready to close. So we will see how things go with that that race that you had up there, Ron Johnson and uh, Mandela, Mandela Barnes. Uh, the Henry Green team, thank you for the super chat, 999. We appreciate it very much. Uh, my husband and I are considering leaving the United States. We are currently in the UK on holiday and have started looking at properties in the United Kingdom and the European Union as an alternative. Uh, we are Floridians here. So um, I understand the sentiment. Um, I think that it is count yourself lucky that you are in a position financially and otherwise to be able to do to make that move. Um, so many people are not. I'm, that's not me being shitty to you. I really am. It's It's great that you're in that position because there are millions and millions of Americans who don't even have the financial wherewithal to move out of the state that they live in, to, to move from, from you know, uh, Texas to New Mexico, even Texas to Louisiana. It, it, is, um, it is a bummer. And it is a conversation that's being had all over the country right now by likely hundreds of thousands of people. Like, when is that moment for us? When is the... When is too much? When is it too much? When do we really need to start looking at maybe moving to Canada or somewhere else because we're turning into a Margaret Atwood dystopian Gilead type of uh, handsmaid tale type of country? And that I know people think that it's hyperbole and it's you know don't say that, but that is where we're going. That is the the the, the kind of country, the kinds of policies that Republicans are engineering to re purpose America into their vision of what it should be, which is that dystopian outlook. They want white men to rule. They want women to be the bearers of children. They don't want women to have jobs. I mean, if you listen to people like Nick Fuentes, who is a white nationalist to be sure, he says what Republicans aren't comfortable saying in public. He just says it out loud. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's where we're headed. Yeah. Well, and on that note of being able to 
leave or move if you have that ability. I've seen it start to pop up on the right where they will talk about, well, listen, uh, the right to abortion, that was just passed to the states. Yeah. And now it's up to the people who live in those states to decide if they if they want to have a right to abortion. What about the people who live in those states who want that right, yeah. who can't afford to leave that state? The Texases or the Idahos or the the, the 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 many other the Mississippi's the Alabamas the other states in the union who are making it impossible for a woman to have bodily autonomy and make healthcare decisions for 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 herself with their doctor it's it's where we are right which then trickles down into many areas where there are kids having to cross state lines to obtain abortions following sexual assaults there are People who are unable to get uh, their pregnancies terminated because they the 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 f there's fetal abnormalities that yeah. make the pregnancy non viable, and the doctor Even refuses to take action on that because they are afraid of legal consequences because of some of these laws. Sometimes people can't get their prescriptions yeah. filled because they might cause an abortion or they may interfere with fertility, even though the prescription is not at all related to an abortion, the, the pharmacist still won't fill it. So this has consequences down the line. And if you live in a state, the right, the right wing will act like, oh, well, it's just, it's choice. It's giving people choice. It's up to the state now. Well, people don't have a choice if they can't afford to leave yeah. that state when they want to. It, we've even heard of cases where a fetus dies inside of of the the mother and they're not allowed to get the dnc a procedure to remove the the dead or dying uh uh organism within them they're not even allowed to do that because oh no that's an abortion when they're carrying around a dead fetus i mean it is it is again cruelty is the point for them yes Ugh. Uh, I do want to address this. I, I want to address this um, this comment here. Uh, Adam Taylor, Jesse, TYT is having Matt Gates on their show. They say they'll hold his feet to the fire and not let him just lie endlessly. But do you think it's wise to give him a platform like that? Um, I wouldn't give him a platform, but I, I and I don't know. I don't know Jank. I don't know Anna. I don't know the people over at TYT. Uh, but I can tell you that... Uh, I know that they're not going to just give him a free pass. So the answer to the question, well, it'll, it's kind of, we're going to have to wait and see how it went down. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be um, platforming Matt Gates, the credibly accused uh, child rapist and uh, election denier. I think anybody who is, is in a position right now to where they are questioning the results of our, of our elections and propping up Donald Trump uh, anybody who's a fascist enabler or a fascist themselves uh, should not be getting rest or respite or uh, platforms to spread their filth, even if it's check. But we'll have to wait and see what they do. They obviously have a much, a much larger platform and operation than we do, and uh, they're going to make decisions for themselves. But you know, all in all, I'm not uh, I'm not shitting on them for 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 doing it. They're making choices. And I think that they will ultimately, I think they'll do the right thing. Well, and so. yeah, we'll see how the interviews go. I think that they're also going to be talking to Larry Elder. So, you know, depending on how that goes, if they do right. ask Matt Gates about his uh, child sex trafficking situation allegations, allegedly, allegedly. I wish I had the drops from the podcast. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it goes. So Dark Pepsi, is it too early to call that Marco winning Florida or other Republicans that are projected winners. So they are projecting that Marco Rubio is the winner in his race mm. for Senate in Florida. And the question is, is it too early? I mean, when it comes down to what they're calling, I don't, I don't know what the metrics are for the media outlets that, that report these things, but I think they don't want to have to take anything back. Yeah. They don't want to have to issue a correction. So if you see a media outlet calling a race it's indicating that it's pretty certain that the trajectory is going to continue to move in a direction for that person they called the race. That's right. And they're just going to continue to gain votes with momentum that just will not be be caught up by the Democratic opponent. So Val Demings, very behind here, you know, not, not going to catch up. Also, 81% of the vote has been counted in this case for Marco Rubio. So they're making that estimation that 
the votes that they're going to continue to count are just going to be his. Yeah. So uh, it is a bummer. Again, uh, Marco Rubio is an absolutely um, disgusting, sycophantic bootlicker of Donald Trump. Donald Trump walked all over him, insulted him, degraded him. And then Marco Rubio just climbs right up inside of his butthole and makes himself at home very cozy. So uh, I don't understand it. It is it is not in my nature to give people who are are uh, terrible to me um, space like that. But. He also did not do well in the debate against Val Demings. No, that's, that's very disappointing because he did not do well at all. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it does look like here the, the this 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 race, Matt Gates, Rebecca Jones. Um, this is not called yet, but I I think it would be. Um, a fool's it would be folly to think that Matt Gates isn't also going to win his race in a district that Trump took by 32 points uh, in uh, in 2020. So um, Florida is a mess, you guys. Florida is a bummer in many, many ways. And uh, what used to be a swing state, Florida, it, it looks like it's really on the on the march to becoming a uh, a sure thing for Republicans. Not great. And Farron could speak more, more expertly about that because he is from there and uh, lives in a Republican hellscape congressional district.